Hey gang, Bronco Carl 92 here. So today's video, I have a launch code reader 6011 that uh, I'm going to review and give my thoughts on. So here we go. Okay, so we have our C reader uh, made by Launch, uh, model 6011. It comes from a company called Topdon. Uh, they contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in uh, taking this and reviewing it. They sent it to me quite a while ago. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had anything broken to work on. So uh, finally, my friend's escape has an ABS light on, so we're going to give this thing a try. So in addition to, um, to reading codes on the engine, um, this also will uh, do ABS and airbags, um, and you can also view and graph data stream and save and review that data also for uh, later use. So uh, let's get this open and see what we have. So we have a cable, interface cable, we have an OB, a um, USB cable for updating. unit itself and we have this nice carry pouch that has an instruction pack in it so yeah I've opened this before um, so it's a pretty nice unit um, it's got a nice color display it seems to be pretty easy to navigate um, the first thing that you do need to do with this before you get started with it is you do need to update it um, and that's uh, achieved uh, two ways there's a little um, SD card under here, which they recommend you remove and update that card. Um, I wasn't so successful that way. Um, the other way is to use uh, this USB cable. Uh, you go on to uh, Launch's website, um, and after you poke around in there a little bit, you can figure out how to update it. And I basically did a complete update on this thing, so if I want to work on a car in Australia or in Europe, I have the capability now. So. Anyhow, uh, let's get this thing plugged into a car, and I'll show you what we got going on. Okay, so Richie tells me that uh, when he drives this car, he starts it up, and he has no lights on, and he says once he starts driving, the ABS light, which is over here, comes on. Um, I do notice that his airbag light is flashing also. I mean, he didn't mention anything about that, so... Maybe we can look into okay, so all we have to do is just access the OBD port with this plug. It's right under the dash over here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the diagnose menu. to go to scan and hit OK and as you can see we have a lot of choices here Dacia, Citroen, some cars we don't have or like I said I updated this thing to have everything I think we went past Ford did we not? Australia Ford, BMW, where's regular Ford? USA Ford, which is almost at the end. Okay, and then diagnose. Okay, automatically search. The automatic selection didn't work, so we're going to go for the manual. Okay, so we have a choice now of the anti-lock brake system or the restraint control. So let's do the anti-lock first. And 
read fault data. Left front wheel speed sensor input missing, which would make sense because the fault actually occurs as soon as you start moving. And battery voltage out of range. Okay, well I know the battery was dead on this car, so. All right, so I will have to diagnose the, uh, the left front wheel sensor. Um, it's possible that there's a problem with the air gap on the sensor or maybe the wiring is, is bad. So I hope you're able to see all this. Anyway, let's uh, go back. And now we can look at the restraint system. And we'll read that data. And we'll read the current codes. Airbag circuit open front passenger side. We'll have to look at that also. So we have two things to look at now. Okay, so I'm in the airbag menu, and I'm actually looking at the at the data stream. This is pretty interesting. So you can select data stream of page. So you can basically look at all the values that the control module is seeing. So you basically hit data stream of all page, or all data stream of page. Excuse me. And once you hit that, it checks off all the boxes on the left side. And then if you arrow back, it basically brings up all the values, which is kind of cool. So it shows the passenger airbag is 2.2 ohm. The seatbelt switch is 39 ohm. Side impact airbag, 6 ohm. Um, Pretension of circuit is 2 ohm. Vehicle ID 1 and 2 voltages are 0. It's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know what the specifications are. I just saw that's changing from 2.1 to 2.2, and that's, that one's fluctuating also. So there may be a wiring connection problem or whatever. I don't know if the bag is bad. to that later. Now if I go back here and hit read data again, it's not the fastest uh, reader, but it seems to actually work really nicely, I think. All right, so we're going to do all data stream of page one here. Bracket ground resistance 0 ohm, continuous codes 1, driver airbag 2.7. Oh, these, these values are actually different here. So the driver airbag is 2.8, the seatbelt switch is 40 ohms, the side impact on this side is 2.8, and this, yeah, 2.8, 2.6, and the pretension circuit is 2.2, 2.3, it fluctuates. So, like I said, yeah, there's probably a wiring issue with this car. I'm wondering maybe if uh, these two issues with the brakes and the airbag are related. So, anyhow, I can go back to diagnosing them. Let's take our... Let's go back. Let's see what the engine has to offer on this car, even though I know there's no faults in it. USA Ford. Oh, we want to go back. You got to go back. I'm sorry. I'm going to do the OBD2. So right now it looks through and it sees which protocol you have, which is PWM. Okay. So we're going to read the codes. Obviously, it's going to vehicles no full codes we know that okay 
you can read the readiness codes, which basically that would mean uh, as long as all your readiness codes are satisfied, um, you can take the vehicle to inspection and pass. Since DTCs were cleared, everything is okay. Misfire monitoring, fuel system monitoring, comprehensive component monitor, cat monitor, heated cat is not applying on this one. The EVAP system is okay. There's no secondary air. Oxygen sensor monitor is okay. EGR and VVT is okay. We can go to the data stream. Let's see what the graphic items look like. And let's go all data stream. This makes a nice graph. Uh, we have load, ECT, engine coolant temperature, short term fuel, and long term fuel. So, if this car had a running problem, this page would be very uh, helpful in helping you diagnose it. So, I like this tool. This thing seems to work pretty well. Um, I will put a link in the description of it. It's, uh, I think, around $250, if I remember correctly. Uh, they sent me this a few months ago, and I haven't had anything broken to diagnose. So this actually uh, is good that I have this car with this, this brake problem. Because not, uh, not all these code readers um, can do more things than just the... Um, the engine and the transmission. So, anyway, the Launch C Reader 6011. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Okay, so we have our data stream for our left front and our left rear wheels. And watch mm -hmm. what happens when I drive. See the uh, left front wheel is kind of bouncing all over the place. So I'm thinking that the uh, tone wheel probably has a bunch of rust on it, or the sensor's got rust on it, and the air gap is bad. So not a wiring problem. Looks like a sensor issue. So let's uh, get it apart and take a look. Okay, so we have our left front wheel off. Uh, we have the car properly supported on a safety stand. And we're going to basically pull the sensor out and take a look at it. So it's just an 8mm and the head's a little puffy, so... carefully remove this sensor don't really see any issue with the sensor the tone wheel I felt all the way around it If we zoom in on the, on the tone wheel, you can see it's nice and crisp. It actually looks that way all the way around. Now, sometimes what happens is that this area here isn't so flat anymore due to rust buildup, and the air gap becomes a little bit more, and that could cause the sensor to, to lose communication. But doesn't seem to be the case here, so maybe the sensor is actually really just bad. I think since I can't really see anything wrong with it, I think I'm just going to replace it 
and retest it. All right, so I went inside and uh, looked to see how much a wheel speed sensor is or if they're available, and I'd have to order it in. So uh, with a hunch, I decided that I would give this thing a try by cleaning up the uh, mating surface where the sensor goes with this flat wheel right here and put the sensor back in and just took it for a ride and it seems to be working fine. Um, it would fault pretty much every time I drove it before and now it didn't fault in two drives so we're gonna give that a go first before spending 60 bucks on a sensor so that's good news. Okay so the launch code reader 6011 I, I like it. It seems to work really well. It's uh, got some good flexibility and for the price I think it'll do everything you need to do it so I'll put the link on how to get one at Amazon uh, in the description of the video. And uh, if you buy one, I hope you like it. Please comment, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Take care.